Target zero. Target zero, yes, yes. I want to see zero deaths. Welcome to Community Conversations. Uh, my name is Jason Bannon. I'm a Wallingford resident. Uh, I'm also an employee assistance uh, professional with a local labor union, uh, helping people uh, with all sorts of issues from financial to substance abuse and everything in between. And today I'm talking with uh, Sylvester. Thank you, Jason. Um, again, for our audience, I'm Sylvester Salcido. I'm the guy who's not the uh, Wallingford resident. I'm an attorney in private practice. I'm also a 20-year Navy veteran. What brings us together today is obviously the uh, opioid crisis that we are experiencing here in Connecticut. Although we may not agree on everything with, with the opioid crisis and how to to combat it, I, I think at the end of the day, both of us, we, and we were talking, both of us right. uh, really want to see zero deaths. In uh, the state of Connecticut. In the state of Connecticut. Well, I'd like to see zero deaths across, you know, the, the world. world. Yes, but, agreed, but, I agree. You know, but here in Wallingford and being a Wallingford resident and, uh, you know, we do have a, a large population here and... and um, well, let's start with Wallingford. Sure. What, what's Wallingford's... Uh, uh, specific experience. There's been um, a lot of overdose deaths here in Wallingford. At one point, we were the leader in Connecticut. And as of two years ago, there was 94 overdose deaths over the course of about five years Okay. Uh, in Wallingford. And sometimes the, the numbers don't reflect what actually is happening. There's, there's more people. Uh, unfortunately, we had one girl who had overdosed and rolled over on her child and the okay. child died as died. well. So, okay. you know, that's an unintended consequence of, Correct. of, of an opiate overdose. Yeah. Uh, overdose. Um, so the numbers don't always reflect what, what actually happens, you know. Correct, correct. The peripheral and sort of collateral yeah. events that happen around the life of uh, somebody who's unfortunately addicted or has a dependency issue with heroin or opioids. But I do know that across the state of Connecticut, it was 1,040 1, people. Right, okay, that sounds Overdose about right. died in, in, in Connecticut, and okay. one's too many. I mean, we can Agreed. agree on that. Well, how do we get to zero, right. target zero? What okay. do you think? Well, well you know, uh, I think that in Connecticut, we've made a lot of, of ground over the, the last several years. Um, I was part of an effort to uh, get the legislation that was passed where now uh, doctors can only prescribe one week of opioid medication. Okay. in the state of Connecticut. Okay. Before it was carte blanche, you could get a 90-day right. supply, there was a lot of diversion, uh, people are selling it on the street. How does it go from that to, to heroin? Because a lot of heroin users will tell you that they started with pills, either right. out of okay. either out of their you know their, their home medicine cabinet right. uh, or uh, friends' medicine cabinets, or you know they had an injury, sports related, we were talking right. our kids, you know, I, I too am a father of two boys, 14 and 11, they play sports. You know, uh, try not to be terrified about it, but sports are, are sports. And if mm -hmm. they get hurt, you know, and they go to the doctor, are they going to be given a, a heavy narcotic medicine? Um, and a lot of people start out with those medicines, and it becomes a financial decision at some point to turn to heroin because the right. doctor shuts you off. You experience pain or discomfort because you're withdrawing from the medication. Right. And, and then it becomes a financial decision to go to heroin because it's cheaper. Right. Well, the the other issue that I think probably will will be uh, a source of uh, deep concern and fear for parents like you. I mean, your 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 oldest boy is now fourteen, and the other one is in middle school at eleven. Mm -hmm. But the uh, social pressures amongst peer groups, obviously. Like for example, you can imagine a scenario where a young man or young woman is 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 very much involved with sports and and athletic uh, activities, but yet will have an unfortunate. Uh, accident or sprain knee or something like that and because they want to maintain their level of performance may not necessarily go to mom and dad and say Jay you know I really hurt myself uh, at, at practice yesterday but amongst their peers they'll just say hey Jay you know just take this little magic pill here and, and it will make you feel better as innocently as that where uh, one peer trying to help another and then it just basically goes downhill from there there are many unknown shall we say influences, factors that will come into an individual's life. What do we do? We're supposed to be the adults in the room. And we say, whether it's to a youngster who, who's, who was injured in, a, in an athletic event or, or you know, a traffic accident or something like that, or even an older person who is suffering from back pain, knee pain. I mean, 
I'm 61 now and I have to sort of get out of bed a little slower in the morning and not just jump out as I did when I was in the Navy at age 22. There are all these risks that we're always faced with, but the key is what do we do as a community here in Wallingford, in Orange, across the state of Connecticut. So like you, I share your concern that we really should get to zero.